It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Anne Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, with the one and only amazing VO tech guru, audio master, Tim Tippetts. Hey, Tim. I don't know about, I don't know about all that, but hello, <laughs> Ann. <laughs> hey, Tim, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, VO tech guru. You know, mm-hmm. you are a VO tech guru, and I was in technology for over 20 some odd years, and I think we both are passionate and and possibly geeky about it. I think it's something that's so important in our industry. And I think we we should really let's talk about technology and why it's so important to be, you know, you, you have to be adept at, at handling technology for this industry. Yeah. In this day and age, you do have to get into the tech side of it, unfortunately, unless, of course, you want to spend uh, a good portion of your income uh, constantly, you know, handling mm-hmm. tech issues call, right, or calling tech support or yeah. Hiring that. Yeah. Out. Right. And then, and then you get the, uh, is it plugged in, <laughs> you know, and the, like, uh, are you sure, you know, that type <laughs> of thing. And sometimes it is something really simple that you otherwise, uh, could and should know about. Oh, absolutely. Uh, at least the basics. Right. But, but here, but here's the thing, Ann, is that everyone who owns an iPhone, for instance, Mm-hmm. Has I don't remember what they say. It has like ten times the amount of computing power that we of the Apollo that we sent to the moon. Okay, mm. that's a pretty powerful statement because you're carrying that around in your back pocket. Okay? Sure. And I've had a lot of people come to me and say, "Now you don't understand. I'm not very techy, you know." And oh my gosh, go people for, say that all the time to me too. And I'm like, "Yeah, you need to reframe that." <laughs> exactly, and and that's why I say each of us. Are, we're already tech wizards, each and mm-hmm. every one of us. If you think about what we have to do on a daily basis in order to get through life, Instagram, Facebook, any number of things that someone might use who is not at all technical, sure, uh, according to them, but will run circles around me all day long with these apps. And I have to use them. You have to use them, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we are we are voiceover professionals and coaches, and so yeah, if we're not using Facebook and and Instagram and and LinkedIn, then we're you know we're hurting ourselves, right? Well, yeah, that, and we have to we have to navigate files and send files to our clients as well. So yeah. we need to know how to do that properly. Yeah. So that's that's really what I want to do is kind of like reframe the conversation about technology because. What ends up happening too often is someone will go in search of information. I'll give you a really good example. So they'll go into a forum and ask a tech question like, hey, guys, uh, I don't know if I should be compressing or not, but what is compression? Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've said this before, but suddenly everyone wants to sound like the smartest person in the room. Right. <laughs> and it's like, you know, well, it depends, you know, threshold, ratio, attack, release. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. People, We get it. You're smart. But can't you just tell this person first that it's an automatic volume leveler and and start having a human conversation? You know, we understand you're super smart. okay? (laughs) but this person is looking for information. And all that's really happening here is you're taking them uh, from being confused into a vortex where now they'll never ask that question again. And, right? and they're even more confused. And that's right. so interesting because I always say in order to be a good teacher, because I was also a teacher for many, many years and still actually coach one-on-one, the, one, of the, one of the best things you can do to be a really good teacher is to break things down and make it simple uh, so right. that it's easier to understand. And I think that if people were to have the proper guidance in terms of technology and things were broken down into simpler pieces, it would be a lot easier to absorb. And it wouldn't scare people. I know technology scares people sometimes. And I and I really, really believe, I've always stood up on my soapbox for this, I really believe that people need to embrace technology. And that includes all the technology that's coming down the pike, like AI and all of that stuff, because we need to be able to roll with it in order to be able to really navigate our businesses and to be successful in our businesses. Yeah, you are incredibly spot on with that. And, you know, I like to call it the tech gremlin, right? That's usually <laughs> how I refer to it because the tech gremlin, uh, what was it? Mugwai from the movie, um, <laughs> you know, always in there tearing wires apart and I don't know what went wrong and I flipped the wrong switch or whatever. And it's almost always something simple too. And I get people who are talking into their mic backwards 
uh, because they disassembled their studio. And or uh, but my favorite, but, my favorite yeah. is when they don't realize, and this is, and this is gold, by the way, and not everybody realizes it unless you're dealing with, with um, studio headphones on a day to day basis. And when you're new to, when you're new to voiceover, you know, that end really does unscrew. So if you need to plug those headphones into a different jack, <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. a different size. And yeah. that always gets people. And I'm like, hey, if you tried unscrewing, you know, if you need to plug that in your computer, if you tried unscrewing the end, yeah. and they're like, oh my God, I never knew. But, I know. And that and and that's when I tell people, look, that's okay, because you don't know what you don't know. And and people feel incredibly embarrassed when they call me and say there's a problem with my microphone. And then I say, Okay, well, you're speaking into it backwards. And then they laugh and they feel embarrassed and they turn mm-hmm. red and all that. But as I always like to say, you're not a true pro until you've spoken into your mic backwards. <laughs> Absolutely. Be- because <laughs> as we go through our careers, we make changes, we get new microphones and all that. Um, but as I like to uh, tell people is that, you know, if you believe tech is going to be hard, you'll be right. If you believe audio tech is going to be hard, you will be right. Okay. But if we break this down and think about it, our brains are supercomputers, right? They're, they're, they're the greatest computers on the planet. And when we open our minds to things, we, they tend to stick. A good example of that would be think about when you were young and you heard a violin for the first time and you asked mom or dad, Hey, what's that sound? And they said, well, honey, that's a violin. Now think about this for a second, because you were open to it and you heard a violin just one time later on, you didn't need to see a violin. You didn't need to see someone playing a violin. You just knew one when you heard one, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with piano, same way we distinguish the difference between one person's voice and another person's voice. Absolutely. Like, Anne, if I called you up, I'm now imprinted upon you, right? Oh, I know Um, a Tim Tippett's voice. Absolutely. (laughs) Because you've heard it enough times. So if I call you up on the phone and I say, Hey, Ann, it's Tim. You'd be like, uh, yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Because Absolutely. the frequencies and patterns of what I say and, and all of that is being imprinted on you over time. That's how smart your brain is. I mean, think about that for a second. You are a tech wizard. <laughs> your brain has mm-hmm. all the capability to take in anything that you're interested in. All right. So. If you're interested in having a successful voiceover career, right, technology is at least half. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, it really is. And if you're you know, I always tell my students, like, you really have to be adept at working with technology. Otherwise, so if it frustrates you or if you get angry about it or you just, you know, you you don't want to deal with it, it's not going to really work well for you um, because it is something that we have to deal with on a day to day basis. And I have to say, I really loved what you said about, you know, you're not a pro unless you've, you know, kind of fallen down or, you know, you've either, you know, broken something or, you know, done talked into your mic microphone backwards because when I used to be riding horses and I would take lessons well you know what they always said that you were never a pro unless you had fallen off your horse Absolutely. and so the education comes in getting back up and getting back on the horse just as technology when something doesn't go right and you've got to try to figure out you know I mean not many of us have at our beck and call a tech person right so in the in the heat of the moment if you have to try to fix something um and you have to try to you know troubleshoot it that is where all the education comes from and that's pretty much what I did in my job for 20 years I was a problem solver and I think that that's what we all have to really develop and fine tune our skills in problem solving for for tech and that goes for audio as well right Tim Absolutely and I've, I've been called the analogy king quite a few times, but I think you just stole my crown with that horse oh. example. <laughs> um, that was that was really solid. But, you know, it's the same in any field. No pro NFL player is, has not gotten his clock cleaned at some point. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality of it. That's how you learn to not get hit. OK. And so the way that you learn to not get hit when it comes to audio is you learn what not to do, because that is the single most important thing is what not to do. Okay. So things that we would not want to do, for example, mm-hmm. would be voicing in a noisy space. Right. Okay. That's, that's one thing. Sure. You can say, make sure you're in a quiet space, but what does that mean? How do you define that? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, when you get in front of a mic and you're recording and then you listen back, it becomes pretty clear. So that, that obviously is part of the quote unquote tech, Right. but along the lines of other simple things, which we're going to talk about in a future episode, 
would be gain levels, your input levels. I've had many people say, well, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Again, that's okay. It's easy enough to learn. Right, right. Okay. So let, let's take this, this thing about compression. Okay. And I, and I said, as an example of how easy it is to transition from not knowing to knowing. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Anne, how much do you know about compression and how to use a compressor? Well, to be honest with you, I don't know. <laughs> I Perfect. just know that I've uh, I've had it in a stack that okay. has compressed some of my audio. So other than that, not a heck of a lot. Great. Perfect. So I'm going to explain compression to you very quickly. Okay. okay. And on the back end of this, I'm pretty sure you're going to understand what it does. All right. So first, I'm going to start with it's an automatic volume leveler. Okay. okay? More, more closely, a better explanation of what a compressor is, is an automatic amplitude leveler. And that simply means the strength of your signal coming in. Okay. Mm. It's going to control it and not let it get too loud. Okay. Right. So we now know that it's, well, let, let's stick with volume though, because that's what everyone's used to saying. So it's an automatic volume leveler. Okay, great. So now if I said the word threshold to you, mm -hmm. what does that mean to you? Well, it's either... It's it's like a high threshold or a low threshold. It's the, right. the most that anything can be. Okay, good. Now, in a compressor, we have a threshold. And you know the input meter on your mm -hmm. DAW, right? It's mm -hmm. always reading somewhere, you know, hopefully between minus 12 and minus 6 dB, you know, is our target area. Okay. Okay. Now, that threshold is simply where I'm going to set that compressor in order for it to start working. So, here's how that works. If I set it at minus 12, anything that you say that's below minus 12 it's not going to be automatically leveled out. If you go over that threshold, it's the compressor is going to start going to work and it's going to start pushing back on the strength mm. of your audio. Okay. Do you understand that? I do. Great. Now let's talk about attack, right? Attack is simply how quickly you want it to start doing that. Simple as that. Okay. Okay. Release is how quickly you want it to stop doing that after it, cr after it goes below the threshold. Okay. And the reason we have those in play is because if you have a very strong attack, it will be constantly compressing mm. every time you go over minus 12, which is something we don't want. And those are details, right? We're, we're, we're doing the 5,000 foot view here. Okay. All right. Now, ratio is another thing. That's how strong we want it to work. So if I say two to one on a ratio, that means for every two dB that you go above that threshold, which we said was minus 12, right? Right. For every 2 dB that you go over, it's only going to let 1 dB through. 2 to 1, simple. Okay? Got 3 it. to 1, for every 3 dB that you go over, it's only going to let 1 pass that threshold. Got it. Okay? And you can just keep going on and on and on and on. And very strong ratios will yield very strong compression. And the more you move the threshold, and these are all, again, granular things. But what I wanted to do was point out that People have typically have no idea what a compressor does. And just by saying it's an automatic volume leveler and, and what we're trying to do here is mimic better mic control. Sure. Okay. So if I get louder. Right. Or if I get quieter. Right. It's, it's allowing me a little bit of room to be able to get louder and quieter without having to worry about moving in toward my mic. Oh, or got it. Getting further away from it. Right. So it helps us. Got it. it. It imitates better mic control. Okay. So. When you break those things down, especially like in my course, I do it visually as well. I use graphics, so it really gets it across, right? But it, it again, it's one of these things where I'm doing text messages and I'm trying to do uh, what uh, emojis, right? Mm -hmm. And my daughters are laughing at me and I'm getting all of these, you know, you get the ROFLs and all that other <laughs> kind of stuff. And I'm turning it towards them and I'm like, what does this acronym mean? And they're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> right. And so they go, no, and they laugh at me and they, you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that. And I'm like, look, I'm no good at this. Why am I not good at it? Because I'm not interested in it. Mm -hmm. Right. For instance, I, my student group is on Facebook and I go in there and I, I answer tech questions and all that. It's a private group. But the point is, is I have to be on that platform. I have to be. But if you ask me later today, Tim, do you want to be on Facebook and I can just take care of all of this for you? I'd be like, take it, <laughs> take it right away. Right. The first time I went Facebook live, I was like, I'm going to completely jack this up. I just know I am. I, I'd never, 
I had heard people doing it. I was with you on VO Peeps when we had that episode. Yep, absolutely. And and you had a moderator and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what? Like, how is this even a thing? And so <laughs> what I did is I simply went on the internet and I watched a video on how to do Facebook Live and how to have a moderator. And I was like, this isn't hard at all. Oh, there you go. I went Facebook Live and the students loved it. See, there is such a thing. I mean, I I am known as Ann Gang Google because I'm constantly <laughs> telling people, right? Just go ahead and Google it because it can it can really help. Now, I know there are some people who like a little more hand holding in terms mm-hmm. of technology, and so I always would recommend for any of you that are, that have a fear of tech or feel as though you're not good with tech, you know, you can take basic technology cl- courses. Mm -hmm. you know, just about anywhere and especially online, right? You can look up anything online. Pretty much there'll be a YouTube video about it. But if you want a little more handholding, then, you know, there are lots of people who offer, you know, general technology classes to help you get up to speed on these things. And then, of course, there are people like real pros that are really honing in on different topics like Tim with your audio classes, right? right? And just technology in general. And I just think that any one of you that are out there that are maybe inhibited by um, by technology, you need to do this. It's not just enough for you to go take coaching, one-on-one coaching and, and vocal performance and then get another demo. If you are lacking in any of some tech, tech skills, I'm going to say basic tech skills in terms of being able to deliver files and quality audio to your client, then you need to get yourself up to speed. I cannot stress that enough. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And having the help of a pro, an audio pro, uh, guiding you, you know, as you had mentioned, my my courses, uh, VOTechGuru.com forward slash courses, people can go check out a free video there. But the thing that I really want to convey today, because it, it crops up all the time, is this is not rocket surgery. Mm-hmm. It just isn't. Okay. One of the problems that we have is on YouTube, we have a lot of people who are musicians who are giving advice that does not apply to voiceover. You would compress vocals, for instance, on a music track much more than you would in voiceover. Voiceover tech is really about kind of like a a soup, right? You don't throw in a handful of salt and then a pinch of pepper. That's not how it works. It's a pinch of salt, a pinch of pepper, a pinch of saffron, whatever the formula is, okay? And it's the same thing with an effects rack is we're not trying to beat the snot out of the audio. That's a really Mm. bad idea. And people don't know. And that's okay. You don't know what you don't know. But what's not okay is not going and finding out because it is absolutely essential. We see it all the time. How many source connect questions have you seen in the last week? How do you map the ports? Right. Exactly. And And I've got a firewall and now it's a problem. mm -hmm. And. And all this other stuff. Okay. But yeah, and here's the thing there, you know, of course, there's Google, right? And even if you can't get into your router, and that's totally understandable. I mean, that's something that I used to do as part of my tech job back in the day Mm -hmm. because we were an internet service provider. But even I said, you know what? I'm just going to let the people over there at Source Connect map my ports if it needs to be done. So there there is, and, and what's really great is that there's a lot of people who are only too happy to explain to you what they're doing. And I always say, go ahead, just take them up on it. You know, try to learn something a little bit new, even if you're like, oh my God, this is so beyond me. If you can just get yourself exposed to more of the terminology and the and the process, I think it's going to help you overall more than anything else. Now, hopefully, you know, it, you're interested in it, right? Because Tim, you're saying, yeah. well, you, you do it because you're interested in it. Um, yeah. If you're not interested in technology, try to th- reframe it so that you're interested in the, um, the, the beautiful things that technology can help you to do right to to grow your career to grow um your personal growth you know the fact that we have you know the internet i'm always saying i would marry the internet if i could because it's just an amazing <laughs> it's an amazing network well right? you'd marry we could, you'd marry certain parts of the internet just that's to be right clear. <laughs> I, <laughs> but you know i mean it's just it's a wonderful thing that we have the information at our fingertips and i'm not going to date myself but i am one of those people that i used to have a library card right remember right. when we used to have to i used to be assigned term papers that we had to do and we'd have to go to the library and sign out books. Well, guess what? The internet, man, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and and the thing, the difference between the library and the internet is the stuff at the library is usually vetted. 
Mm-hmm. But true. Very the internet true. is the wild west, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And, and it will be for some time, and it's improving. Uh, as, but there's as still get... accessibility instantaneously. Oh no, which absolutely, is a feature. absolutely. Yeah, you you talked about your Google name, the one I used to, the, the one I yep. used to use. I don't anymore. As I say, what do I look like, Toogle? To you, <laughs> Toogle. You know, that's, that's what I tell people. But you know, it, it it's just like anything. If you're interested in having a successful voiceover career. You do need to know some basic things, and there are other things that you can set it and forget it. Okay, absolutely. But a basic, a, a basic thing would be something like uh, I did a voiceover not too long for for Bazooka Candy, where I had to turn my uh, input down while I yelled this thing. You know, I'm 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 the moose, I'm the mascot's voice, right? Uh, but I'm otherwise doing a very close read and uh, had to turn my gain up. So just knowing what your gain input knob can or cannot do for you, when I turned my gain down in order to yell bazooka okay which is which was my line i didn't move that much further away from the mic at all i just turned my gain way down did a test with the guy live and said how's that now why is that advantageous the further i get away from my mic if i have to yell the more of my room you're gonna hear and we don't want that we don't want we don't want the previous voiceover sounding this way and then i get loud you know i'll pull my mic away right now bazooka right you can hear the entire room right so just something as simple as that which anyone can do anyone can do it's it's a habit you do it again and again and again and before you know it you know you get used to it just like anything else go into facebook if you've used facebook before on your on your phone how hard is it to get into facebook you don't even think about it and 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 going back to it and i know that you told me once that you used to uh build websites i did so okay so when you first got into building websites, uh, what did that look like for you? What, what, was there trepidation there? I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> okay, you had no idea what you were yep. doing. Okay, and so but, I was like, "Whoa!" So when you first started building these websites, you had a lot in front of you, and I did. Yeah, and it, and obviously, at some point, you're going to be intimidated. That's the reality oh, of the situation. Yeah, I you're was going into something new, but it's just like a new job, right? When we get a new job, we don't w- know what we're doing. Then we're there for a month and we look back and we go, well, what the heck was I worried about? There you go. Yeah. Okay. You just kind of take it, it slow, piece by piece. Yeah. And it will and, come and together. How long, did it, how long did it take you before you stopped uh, being concerned about building websites? Oh, a few weeks. Okay. I'm going to say. So not- yeah, because once I learned enough to, to, to begin, then it became manageable. Right. That's it. So, so don't fear the reaper. <laughs> you know, don't fear the tech Good realm. advice. The, yeah, the, the the tech gremlin is is more or less imaginary. Uh, you can get rid of it really easily. And again, you don't really need to know that much. And you can get people to fish for you and create presets Absolutely. and all that other kind of stuff if you need to, because you don't want to get into it. That's fine as well. But the more control that you have over what's happening in real time, the less stress you're going to have. And yeah. the less stress you have, guess what? Less mouth noise better performance oh yeah it it all ties in it all ties in and i'm gonna say if you decide that you know technology is not your thing know enough so that you know how to direct someone and you know what you want out of it so that you can direct someone to help you that's basically how it works for you know if you want to outsource it so yeah advice good yeah. yeah good stuff tim um so guys don't be afraid of tech there are lots of people out there there are lots of resources out there Tech is an integral part of what we do every day. So don't fear the reaper. <laughs> yes. Good episode. All right. I'd like awesome. to give a big shout out to one of my favorite tech softwares, and that is IPDTL. And Kevin Leach out there um, It allows Tim and I to connect and communicate and talk about tech like this. You can find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next week. See you guys. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.